All right, in this video, we're going to see how to use the runge kutta method to solve a nonlinear first order differential equation. As with the Euler method and improved Euler method, we need to solve for the first derivative. We're going to use the same example as we did with the improved Euler methodology. Uh, so we've already seen how to solve for y prime here. We just subtract 3y from both sides. and get this version of the differential equation. So when we refer to f later on in the formulas, that's what we're using. As we're saying that uh, f is this. We're going to use the same step size because we are going to be comparing to Euler's method. Sorry, the improved Euler's method. Uh, so we starting at 0 and then going in steps of 0.05 and uh, we'll do two steps and then uh, switch over to technology. But there's the indexing of the first 3x values. So we know y0 is 2 and then we want to figure out what y1 is and what y2 is. We're going to approximate those using the runge kutta method. And in the same way that improved Euler took the average of two slopes, uh, runge kutta takes the average of four different slopes involving not just the initial condition and the next step, um, but two half steps. And each time we do one of these, it actually uses the previous one. So you need to you know, kind of get k10 and store it because you use it in the next slope and then you need to use that slope k2 and the next one k3 and that goes into k4 and then they all get averaged together and it's a weighted average with a little more weight put on the k2 and k3. Right, so let's see how that looks. So k10 is just the slope at the initial condition. So we're going to replace x with 0, and y with 2. And so this is 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. So let's store negative 2 as k10, k10. And now we're going to get k20. And it's going to use the same formula for slope. Uh, but instead of using x0, we're going to actually take a half step. So h is 0 0.05, so h over 2 is 0 0.025. And so x0, which is 0, going forward a half step, will actually just give you the 0 Now we need to figure out what y is. So y is actually the starting value for y. Plus the change in y that is determined from taking a half step and multiplying by the slope that we found with k10, which is of course negative 2. So that's negative 2. And a half step is 0 0.025. And the initial value is 2. So we take the initial y value and we do a half step and find the change in y using the slope from k10.
Uh, so this is 2 minus 0 0.05, which is 1.95. So that's what we'll use for y. Now we just simplify all this. Calculator just died on me. Let's come back up. Okay, so we decided to use the graphing calculator emulator here. Um, I'm just trying to find the K20 with that calculation. Here's what it looks like on the uh, graphing calculator. Yeah, negative 2.19125. So when we go to K30, it's very similar to K20. We use the exact same x value, right? The half step forward for x and a very similar sort of half step forward for y, except for the slope, instead of using the k10, I use the just found k20. So that means this 1.95 will be different, be a different number. it'll be this number. And so again, since y naught or y sub 0 is 2, right, 2, and since h is 0 0.05, this is a half step forward for h, 0 0.025, and then for k20, we use that number we just found. And that's why you want to store these as separate things in your code and in your calculation. So let's figure out what that number is. And you can use second uh, answer to get the previously stored number. It's very close to 1.95, but uh, slightly lower. That's what we use for our y value in these slope calculations. I guess I need to chop it off a little sooner. So I'm chopping it off here in my work just so we can have room on the paper. But you don't want to be chopping it off when you're calculating this. So use something to save all those decimal places. Uh, now remember this basic calculation was done earlier uh, with the uh, 1.95 and I can call that back by hitting second enter a couple times and I can just edit this right and I can just replace the 1.95 with the previously stored answer which is going to use all those decimal places.
again, it's getting cut off a little bit there, but that's the idea. All right, we're uh, about to do the fourth and final K, or slope calculation. And uh, the X value changes on this one. So let's go ahead and start with this. Because uh, with uh, the x, we're actually going to take a full step forward. So instead of the half step of 0.025, we're going to take the full step to 0.05. So that'll be x plus h for each of those. And what about the y value? All right, so we, we're going to follow that same pattern for y values where we march forward using the previous k value. But unlike k2 and k3, which used a half step, uh, K4 uses a full step, but it does use the previous K. So you start with your initial Y value, which is 2, and then a full step forward. You know what, getting rid of these will actually cut back on the size of this thing. And then we'll put in the K30 there. So let's figure out what that number is. We have 2 plus 0 0.05 times k3 is 0 0.890. Got that. So we're going to, again, edit the calculation that's already in there. So we'll call that back. Answer's already in there, so we're already going to be using K30 where we want to. But we need to change the X values, because they're set at the half step. We want to change them to the full step. So we'll change those to 0.05. So it's just two of them. And there is our K40. All right, now we have these four K values. We're going to use a weighted average with doubling the weights on the two and the three. So your initial y value is 2, and h is 0.05, and then we'll sort of add these up, right? So k1 is negative 2, k2 is negative 2.193125. that calculation in. And we can use some of the stored answers if we do this right. So we'll do 2 plus 0 0.05 parentheses. Um, so the first one is just negative 2. The next one we want to use the full stored answer from above so I can go up here and get it. Um, the, new, the older TIs and TI-83s don't allow you to do this. So you'd want to have written down these with all their digits. So you could retype it in. And I want to grab uh, K30 from above. And then grab K40. 
So it adds them all up, and then we divide by 6, because we're putting double weight on 2 in the middle. And there's your y1. So it takes a while. Um, we're going to go ahead and just do one round by hand. We're going to jump into doing this. Um, but the process repeats where you would use these set of formulas. And you now use x1, which is 0.05, and y1 as sort of your starting point. And you can get this new set of formulas for k11, k21, k31, and k41 to get your four slopes and average them up the same way. And in general, we would just repeat that process as much as we needed. So let's go ahead and grab this number and put it in our table. Um, so if you remember from the last video with the improved Euler, we're actually going to use the Rangakutta as the exact, uh, because you're going to invariably have situations where you won't have an exact solution. And a common practice is then to use a more accurate numerical method as the exact solution and use that to determine the error in the weaker method. So the approximate will be the improved Euler, which we have. Uh, should be stored in here. We want to try to get one more of these without having to go through it all, and so we'll show how this would work with the Sage software. So I'm going to pull up the numerical methods with Sage file. And uh, scroll down to where it says Rangakutta. Go ahead and take that. And we'll paste it here. And then we'll just edit it. So we don't have an exact solution. We'll comment that out. Uh, the right hand side. Is given. It's x squared. Minus 3 times x times y plus y squared minus 3 times y. And we start off at 0, 2, and h is 0 0.05. We'll just take five steps. You don't have to edit any of that other code, but we do want to take exact out of the graph. We don't have the exact solution.
there's a graph of it, and uh, you can compare the number we got for our first result here. That should match up with what we found, uh, but give us a little more accuracy. So we were only getting to the second seven digit, um, but you can get five more digits using Sage. Um, the next result would be the number there. So let's write that one in. And from this, we can get the error. You'll notice when the errors start to get real small, it'll give us in scientific notation. So this is 0 0.000. .00. Zero, three, four, seven, seven. Uh, the sign of the error is usually not that important. So you know, if you subtract the wrong way and get a negative error, just typically take the absolute value of that. Uh, let's try to subtract these two numbers now. Okay, so keep in mind this is error for Euler's method. Uh, sorry, improved Euler's for the improved Euler's method. And uh, since we, can't, we don't have an exact solution to get a sense of the error for the Rangakata method, we need a method more powerful than that. And while methods like that do exist, uh, we haven't brought them up in this class, so we're not going to be able to mention those here. This is a great way to get an estimate on the error if you didn't have the exact solution. So we mentioned that Rangakata is order 4 method. That means its error is proportional to h to the 4th power. And so sometimes you'll see it referred to as Rangakata 4. So if you uh, you reduce the step size by half. Uh, then the error would decrease by one half to the fourth, which is one sixteenth. Uh, so that would be another way to find it, is to use the same method. If Maybe if you had the best method, like Rangakata, you could get a sense of the error by having the step size and running that for a short period of time and comparing those initial steps. Uh, just make sure you're comparing them at the same x values, because when you start having the step size, uh, your first value won't correspond to the same x value anymore. All right, and that's Rangakata method.